Tank Engine Thomas again. Dear friends, here is news from Thomas's branch line. It is clearly no ordinary line, and life on it is far from dull. Thomas asks me to say that if you are ever in the region, you must be sure to visit him and travel on his line. They will have never seen anything like it, he says proudly. I know I haven't. The author, the Reverend Wilbur Audrey. Thomas and the Guard Thomas the Tank Engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. He has two coaches. They are old and need new paint, but he loves them very much. He calls them Annie and Clarabelle. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, luggage, and the guard. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, Thomas sings them little songs, and Annie and Clarabelle sing too. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them, because they know he's trying to please the fat controller. And they know too, that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross with them, he's cross with the engines on the main line who have made him late. One day, they had to wait for Henry's train. It was late. Thomas was getting crosser and crosser. How can I run my line properly if Henry is always late? He doesn't realize that the fat controller depends on me. And he whistled very impatiently. <coughs> At last, Henry came along, and Thomas said, Where have you been, lazy bones? Oh, don't be cross, Thomas, please. My system is out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer. Oh. No rubbish. You're too fat. You need exercise. Lots of people with piles of luggage got out of Henry's train and they all climbed into Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had to wait until they were ready. At last, the guard blew his whistle and Thomas started off at once. The guard turned around to jump into his van, but tripped over an old lady's umbrella and fell flat on his face. By the time he had picked himself up, Thomas, Annie and Clarabelle were steaming out of the station. Thomas was in a hurry to get away. Oh, come along, come along! But Clarabelle didn't want to come along. I've lost my nice guard! I've lost my nice guard! Annie tried to tell Thomas, We haven't a guard! We haven't a guard! But Thomas was hurrying. He wouldn't listen, and on he puffed. Come along! Come along! Annie and Clarabelle tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard, and they kept crying out, Where is our guard? Where is our guard? Thomas, please stop! Thomas, please stop! But Thomas didn't stop, until they came to a signal, and the signal said, Stop! Thomas was very cross, and he said to his driver, Now bother that signal! What's the matter? And Thomas's driver said, I don't know. The guard will tell us in a minute, Thomas. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Thomas got even crosser. Where is the guard? Annie and Clarabelle knew, and they were crying. We've left him behind! The driver, the fireman, and the passengers looked, and there was the guard running as fast as he could along the line, with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. Everybody cheered him. He was very hot, so he sat down, had a drink, and told them all about it. Thomas was very sorry. I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Thomas. It was an old lady's umbrella. Look, the signal is down. Let's make up for lost time, eh? Come on. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their guard again that they sang to Thomas, As fast as you like, as fast as you like. And Thomas went as fast as he could. And they reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. 
Thomas goes fishing. Thomas's branch line has a station by a river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he often sees people fishing. Sometimes they stand quietly by their lines. Sometimes they actually jerk fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, "No, Thomas. What would the fat controller say if we were late?" Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing. Every time he met another engine, he would say, "I should like to go fishing." They all answered, "Engines don't go fishing." But that made Thomas impatient, and he would say, "Phew, silly stick in the muds." Thomas genuinely had to take in water at the station by the river. One day, he stopped as usual, and his fireman put the pipe from the water tower into his tank. Then he turned the tap on, but it was out of order, and no water came. Thomas said to his driver, "Now、oh, bother! I'm thirsty." Never mind, Thomas. We can get some water from the river. They had a bucket and some rope, and they went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down into the water. The bucket was old and had five holes in it, so they had to fill it up, pull it up, and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. Thomas's fireman sang, "There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza." But the driver said, "Never mind about Liza. You empty the bucket before you spill the water on me. Go on." At last, they finished, and Thomas started off. That's good. That's good. And Annie and Clarabel ran happily behind. That's much better. That's much better. They puffed along the valley and were in the tunnel when Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler, while steam was hissing from his safety valve in an alarming way. Thomas's driver said, "There's too much steam," and the fireman opened the tap in the feed pipe to let more water into the boiler, but none came out. Thomas groaned, "Oh dear! I'm going to burst! I'm going to burst!" They damped down his fire and struggled on, but Thomas was in a terrible state. I've got such a pain! I've got such a pain! Just outside the last station, they stopped, uncoupled Annie and Clarabel, and ran Thomas, who was still hissing fit to burst, onto a siding right out of the way. Then, while the guard telephoned for an engine inspector and the fireman was putting out the fire, the driver wrote notices in large letters, which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger! Keep away! Soon, the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up, Thomas. We'll soon put you right. The driver told the inspector what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked. Well, I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came back down and told the fat controller, "Excuse me, sir, but look in the tank, won't you please, and tell me what you see?" Oh yes, certainly, Inspector. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Well, I never, Inspector. Can you see fish? Gracious goodness me! How did the fish get in there, driver? Thomas's driver scratched his head. We must have fished them from the river, and he told them about the bucket. The fat controller laughed. Well then, Thomas. So you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you, Thomas, do they? We must get them out. So the driver and fireman fetched rods and nets, and they all took turns fishing in Thomas's tank. When they had caught all the fish, the station master gave them some potatoes. The driver borrowed a frying pan while the fireman made a fire beside the line and did the cooking. Then they all had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. The fat controller finished first. Mm -mm. Mm, that was good, very good indeed. But fish don't suit you, Thomas, do they? So you mustn't do it again. And Thomas said, "No, sir, I won't. Engines don't go fishing. 
It's too uncomfortable. Thomas, Terence, and the snow. Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard a tractor at work. One day, stopping at a signal, he saw the tractor close by. The tractor looked over the fence at Thomas and said, "Hello, I'm Terence. I'm plowing. I'm Thomas, and I'm pulling a train." Oh, what ugly wheels you've got! They're not ugly. They're caterpillar tracks. I can go anywhere with my tracks. I don't need rails. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I like my rails, thank you. And off went Thomas. Winter came, and with it, dark, heavy clouds full of snow. Thomas's driver said, "Ugh, I don't like it. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us." But Thomas saw that the snow was melting on the rails, and he said, <laughs> "This is soft stuff. There's nothing to it." And he puffed on, feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but the country was covered, and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. The driver said, "You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas." Snowplow? Huh. <laughs> Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. Now you listen to me, young Thomas. We are going to fix your snowplow on, and I want no nonsense, please. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable, and it made Thomas cross. He shook it and banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, Thomas. And he shut the shed doors for the night. The next morning, both the driver and fireman came early, and they worked hard to mend the snowplow. But they couldn't make it fit properly. It was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it. I shan't have to wear it. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't need it today. Snow can't stop me. And he rushed off into the tunnel, thinking of how clever he was. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the side of the cutting. <laughs> silly old snow! Silly old snow! Look out! I'm coming! Cinders and ashes! I'm stuck! And he was. The driver said, "Back, Thomas! Back!" Thomas tried, but his wheels spun, and he couldn't move. More snow fell and piled up around him. The guard went back for help, while the driver, fireman, and passengers tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Thomas was very upset. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods! I shall have to stop here until I'm frozen. Oh, what a silly little engine I am! And Thomas began to cry. A bus came and took all of Thomas's passengers away, and Thomas felt very lonely and sad. When he heard a noise from the tunnel, yes, it was Terence, and he came chugging out of the tunnel. Hello, Thomas. Now don't worry, I'll soon get you out. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged. At last, he dragged Thomas into the tunnel. Thomas was very grateful. Thank you, Terence. Thank you. Your caterpillar tracks are really splendid. They can take me anywhere, Thomas. And Thomas's driver said, "I hope you'll be more sensible now, Thomas." I'll try to be. I'll try to be. And Thomas puffed off for home. Thomas and Bertie. One day, Thomas was waiting at a junction when a bus came into the yard. Thomas said to the bus, "Hello. Who are you? I'm Bertie. And who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this line." Oh, so you're Thomas, aren't you? 
Ah, yes, I remember now. You got stuck in the snow, didn't you? I took your passengers, and Terence pulled you out, didn't he? Well, I've come to help you with your passengers today. This made Thomas very cross indeed, and he let off steam. Help me? I can go faster than you. You can't. I can. You can't. I can. All right. I'll race you. The drivers agreed. The station master said, "Are you ready? Steady, go!" And they were off. Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Thomas was running well, but he didn't hurry. Annie and Clarabel were rather anxious. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? But Thomas said, "Wait and see. Wait and see." He's a long way ahead. He's a long way ahead. But Thomas didn't mind. He remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates as they sailed gaily through. <laughs> Goodbye, Bertie. The road left the railway and went through a village, so they couldn't see Bertie. They stopped at a station, and Thomas called out, "Quickly, please! Quickly, please!" Everybody got out quickly. The guard whistled, and off they went. Thomas sang, "Come along, come along," and Annie and Clarabel sang, "We're coming along, we're coming along." Hurry, hurry, hurry! No,、oh. for there, straight ahead, was Bertie crossing the bridge over the railway, and he was tooting triumphantly on his horn. <laughs> Thomas groaned, "No."、Oh. Father, how father! Annie and Clarabel wailed. He's a long way in front. He's a long way in front. But Thomas's driver said, "Now steady, Thomas. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll." Now,、oh, father, there's a station. And as he stopped, he heard something go. <laughs> Goodbye, Thomas. You must be very tired. Sorry, I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Tara. The next station was by the river. They got there quickly, but the signal was up. Thomas thought, "Oh dear, we've lost now." But he felt better after a drink. Then James rattled through with a goods train, and the signal dropped, showing that the line was clear. Hurrah! We're off! Hurrah! We're off! And as they rumbled over the bridge, they heard a very impatient. <laughs> and there was Bertie waiting at the red traffic lights, while cars and lorries crossed the narrow bridge in the opposite direction. But as soon as the lights turned green, Bertie was off with a roar, and soon he and Thomas were racing side by side up in the valley. The passengers in the train and in the bus got very excited and started cheering and shouting. Now Thomas had reached his full speed, and foot by foot, yard by yard, he gained on Bertie until they were running level. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Slowly but surely, he drew ahead until he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. Thomas was very pleased. I done it! I done it! So were Annie and Clarabel. We've done it! Hooray! We've done it! Hooray! And on they went to the last station. The passengers gave Thomas three cheers and told the station master and the porters all about the race. When Bertie came in, they gave him three cheers too, and Bertie said. That was well done, Thomas. That was fun, but to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. Thomas and Bertie now keep each other very busy. Bertie finds people in the villages who want to go by train and takes them to Thomas, while Thomas brings people to the station for Bertie to take home. They often talk about their race. But Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced about like peas in a frying pan, and the fat controller has warned Thomas about what happens to engines who race at dangerous speeds. So, although between you and me, they would like to have another race, but I don't think they ever will. 
will they? 